Glory to God. Amos chapter 5 and verse 4. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. You may be seated. The Lord said unto Israel, Seek ye me, and ye, ye, you shall live. Amen. Sounds like a promise to me. Sounds like a directive to me. This morning for a few moments, let me preach on this thought. Follow God. Amen. Follow God. The word seek simply means to follow, to pursue, or to search. Amen. So we understand what we're talking about today. Israel is as Israel was so many times. In the word of God, as the Lord had brought them out of Egypt, or prior, even prior to going into Egypt, we find that Israel had problems with rebellion. And the Lord's speaking to them here in Amos chapter 5. And the Lord's just simply telling them if they would look to Him, they could save themselves a lot of problems. They could save themselves a lot of turmoil and a lot of trial if they would just look and follow the Lord. Well, isn't that good advice today? So simple but yet so difficult for so many just to be able to follow the directives of God. If I remember correctly, the Bible says, the Lord said that His ways were not grievous, that His burden was not heavy, and that His yoke was light. Or His yoke was easy and His burden was light. Oh, we find today that as we think about things, the Lord hadn't made this thing so hard that we can't follow Him. Amen. He's made a way for you and I. He's done the hard part. He's paid the price. All we got to do, amen, is just enjoy the benefits of serving the Lord Jesus Christ. I look at it today as a benefit to be a child of God. If I could be anything in this world, I don't know of anything I'd rather be than born again. Amen. When I found Jesus, I found everything. Amen. There's a lot of high rollers in this world today, but can I tell you, they don't have what I have. And if you've got Jesus, you, they don't have what you have. They, there's a lot of people think that they're having fun today, living it up and hooping and hollering and enjoying, uh, amen, everything that life has to offer. But I'm going to tell you, they hadn't experienced, amen, what I've experienced in Jesus Christ. Because they cast those things aside and they'd cleave unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If they just knew the sweet presence that He brings uh, unto our hearts and to our lives. Amen. Oh, I look to you today. I saw a bumper sticker. I was up at uh, uh, the, the tire shop the other day at Tire Sales and Service and I saw a van uh, uh, backed in there and it had a bumper or, or some kind of sticker on the back of it. Uh, it said, The party in hell's been canceled because of the fire. Amen. And I thought, you know what? That pretty that says it pretty good. There's a lot of people that think that there's going to be a good get together in hell. But the Bible says that there's weeping and wailing and a gnashing of teeth and a place where the worm dies not. We don't want to go there, friend. Uh, amen. And if we'll follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to worry about going there. We don't have to be a part of that. We can go to a city. Amen. That has no need of the sunshine because the light of the Lamb of God is the only light that the city will need. I'm telling you today, friend, uh, if we'll follow the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, it will lead us to a land, uh, amen, of pure delight, uh, amen, where God sits on the throne. But Israel had idol problems. Oh, and they were just uh, back and forth. When they got in trouble, it's just like you know, people do today. When they got in trouble, they'd call on the Lord. And when things were going good, they'd revert back to their old practices. And, and, and the Lord said, listen, and so many times in the Bible, He reproved them and corrected them and told them, it's time to get this thing settled. But here it is again. And we read in verse 5, he said, or verse 4, he says, Seek me and you'll live. And then in verse 5, he said, Seek not Bethel. 
Well, we understand Bethel uh, is the house of bread. That's just the meaning of the word Bethel is the house of bread, if I'm not mistaken. And But yet, we find that the Lord told him to seek not Bethel. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's a reason, because uh, in Bethel we find that there was the golden calf that they had created to idol worship. And God said, I don't want you to worship the golden calf, you know. I don't want you to worship the creations of your own hand. So you're not going to find me if you go to Bethel where the calf's at. You're not going to find me there. Oh, that's, that's a good one there. Hey, man, don't go where God tells you not to go. Hey, man, because you're not going to find Him. Hey, man, if God says don't go, don't go. Hey, man, because He's not going to be there. So He said don't go to Bethel. Don't seek Bethel. Don't pursue Bethel. Don't pursue the golden calf. And he said, don't enter into Gilgal. Why not Gilgal? You know, Gilgal was one of them places, if I'm not mistaken, that um, uh, jo Joshua had his battles, or, or, or one of them there had their battles. And uh, uh, we find that he said, don't go to Gilgal. Why? Because Gilgal was a place that was given to idols. And he said, neither are you to go to pass through Beersheba. And he said, Beersheba was just a, a, a rendezvous for idols. It was a gathering place where they all come together. What does it mean? He says, I don't want you to go to these places because these places are places of death. These places are, are places that put separation between you and me. If you go there, you're not going to find me. Hey, man, I believe people are looking for something today, but they're looking in the wrong places. Amen. They look for him at the bottle of a, of a glass of alcohol, or they look for him uh, at the bottom of a pill bottle, or they may look for him at, at, in the, at the end of, of drugs or whatever it may be, or a needle, or, or, or immorality, or immoral acts. They look for him in all these things, but you just can't find the Lord. When you find the Lord, you find peace. They don't bring you peace, do they? Amen. No, they don't. You think about it. You look at all the people today that are hooked on drugs and hooked on different things. Uh, do they look like they're having a peaceful life to you? They're sitting around wondering where they're going to or how they're going to get their next fix. Uh, parents selling their children and parents prostituting their children out, prostituting themselves out, getting rid of everything that they've got just so that they can find that next fix to get them a break from reality. Hey Amen. I don't need a break from reality. Hey Amen. Because I found Jesus Christ uh, and He gave me His Spirit uh, and His Spirit helps me to deal with it. Uh, hey Amen. You don't have to run from your problems today. Just run to the problem solver in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can cast your care and your burden upon the Lord. Amen. And the Lord will give you deliverance. Amen. People are following the wrong ways today and doing the wrong things. I believe following the Lord is a one-way road, don't you? And we can't go about it the wrong way. Hey man, we got to follow the law. You wouldn't think that on an interstate somebody would get in the southbound lane and try to go north, would you? But it happens. And most times when that happens, tragedy follows it. You wouldn't think if there was one-way streets running through the town that a local resident would get confused and take that one-way street and go backwards. But it happens, does it not? I'm just saying this, that people do things that we don't expect they do every day. We wonder, we listen to the news, and we listen to accounts of things that different people do. And we wonder, how in the world did they ever come up with that? Or how in the world did they ever do that? But can I tell you, I know, amen, that the man that I serve knows what's going on in both places, amen. God won't get me lost, amen. 
God won't get me in a bind. If I'll follow Him, amen, I can serve Him in the beauty of who He is, amen, and I might run through turmoil, and I might run through trouble, but can I tell you, He'll give me the gear to survive it, amen. Why? Because I follow Him, amen, and He won't lead me anywhere that He, can get, he can't get me out of, amen. We got to learn to follow God. We got to pursue Him. We got to search for Him. We've got to seek Him today that we can have life and have that life more abundantly, amen. The Lord said in Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17, He said, I love them that love me, and that them that seek me early shall find me. And I looked it up, and basically it just says those that are diligent, and those that uh, exercise that ability to get up in the wee hours and diligently find Him. The Bible says that He delights in those very things. Jesus told us in Luke chapter 11 and verse 9, He said, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find, and knock, and it shall be opened uh, unto you. What is the Lord saying? If you'll follow, if you'll pursue, if you'll call upon my name, He said, I will be there to help you. Amen. We have no reason to hang our head. Amen. And wonder what in the world's going on. The Bible says, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. My friend, it's time that the church exercise her confidence and God afresh and anew. The Lord has not failed us. He has never let us down. He's still God high and holy sitting on the throne of glory. Amen. Listening to His Son intercede for you and I. The church is not going down in the flames of defeat. We're rising up on the prayers of the Holy Son of God. And if we'll but follow Him. Amen. The Bible says He'll lead us unto life everlasting. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want anything that this world's got if it's going to cost me Jesus. Amen. One man said you can have the fame and the riches and all these things. I don't need earth's gain. I just want Him. It's my desire to follow Him. It's my desire to be like Him. I may not have a beard and long hair, amen, as a Nazarite, and I may not wear the robe that He wore in that day, but I've got Him in my life, amen. He's living and abiding in my soul. I I chose to follow Him. He didn't make me do it. He said, follow me. And I was compelled by those voices the same way that Peter, James, and John, and Bartholomew And those boys were compelled. So was I compelled to throw down my net and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. On this wonderful journey to glory. Amen. He wants us to follow Him. Amen. I think about those disciples. They had their good days and their bad days. But I'm going to tell you what. They found that Jesus was faithful to them. They found that Jesus never sent them anywhere. Amen. That He didn't help them. Amen. He sent the 70 out two by two and told them, He said, now don't you take nothing. Don't you take a thing with you. And He said, if you're not provided for in that city, He said, you walk out of that city and you shake the dust off and you walk on. Amen. All he was saying is this. If I send you where they don't want you, you just walk on. Amen. And follow me because I'm going to lead you. Uh, amen. In the paths of righteousness. Amen. We need to follow God. We need to follow the Lord. There's so many things out there today that are trying to get our attention. People are becoming more and more consumed uh, with things in their life. There's not an importance about going to the house of God anymore because people become too busy. 
Amen. We're too busy when we can't go to church. Amen. We got too much on the plate when we can't or won't go to church. Amen. We need to follow the Lord. Amen. There's nothing else going to lead you to God like supporting the house of God. Amen. We need to follow the Lord. Amen. Golden girls ain't going to lead you to Jesus. Huh? Fox News won't lead you to Jesus. CNN definitely won't. Neither will Rush Limbaugh. Huh? Neither will Meet the Browns lead you to Jesus. The TV evangelist is not going to lead you to Jesus. Because somewhere along the line, he's going to be asking for money. How many times do I ask you for money? I just ask you to do what God asks you to do, just pay your tithes. And I ask you to support a little mission work. That's all I ask you for. But they need you to support them so they can get that mansion, that $3 million spread. Because they live in a hard life. They sacrifice so much for the Lord. But it looks like to me them missionaries over in foreign lands are the ones that's really sacrificing. And they don't hardly have nothing to put over their head and, and eating what the natives eat. And you got to have a cast iron stomach to eat what the natives eat. I'd have to take armor with me, armor meat company or whatever it is that makes vainas and potted meat. I'd have to take a good share of that over there with me. Brother Terry, I like my food fresh, but it don't mean I want you to step outside and kill it and cook it. I ain't wanting to see the chicken run by and the next thing I know he's laying on the plate. I thank God I ain't never had to eat goat. Some of you may like it, but I thank God I ain't never had to eat no goat. I thank God I don't have to lay down and worry about spiders coming down in the night and biting me in them little thatch huts. Can't keep nothing in them and can't keep nothing out of them. I remember when Brother Jimmy was here giving his thing about when he went to Belize and they would be walking down the road and they'd walk through what you would call jungles. It won't the resort part. They won't doing missionary work in the resort part. They was where the people lived. They said you'd be walking down the road and there might be panthers and all kinds of stuff in there looking at the woods at you and might come out to get you, to attack you. And that ain't the life of Riley, friend. So I don't feel sorry for them. In their big houses, and the entourage that they have with them because ain't too don't sound like too much of a sacrifice to me. Not all of them's bad. We can't clump them all together. But there's enough of them that ain't good that makes me know that the local house of God's the place to go and support. But can I tell you today that they're not going to give you what you need to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't worship in your home and get what you need from God in front of that TV. But you can come to the house of God and brothers of like faith can gather with you and you can worship the Lord together and your heart and your mind can be strengthened and encouraged in the Lord. You can find somebody that can be uh, sympathetic to your needs and pray for you just because they care about you. They know your name. They know who you are. They know what you're going through and they're there to help you. You'll find that on God's highway. You'll find people that care about you. 
If we'll follow God, we won't be left alone. We'll always have the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ and His people in our life to help us in the down times in our life. That local assembly is important. You can't go everywhere and find people that love the Lord and are trying to do His will and His way. Amen? That their sole purpose is to love God. But if you'll follow the Lord, the Lord can lead you to those places of where there's water to drink, and where there's pasture to graze upon the things of God. Amen. And there's refreshing in God's house. I'm telling you today, we got to follow God. We can't afford to follow anybody else. We can't go where the idols are at. We can't go where the people of that nature resort. God said, I don't want you to be a part of that. I want you to congregate around me. I want you to throne me. Is what the Lord said and worship me. I think about what Moses wrote in Deuteronomy in chapter 30 when he was uh, talking with the children of Israel and encouraging them. And I'll just read these few verses to you in chapter 30 and verse 15. And Moses said, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in His ways and to keep His commandments and His statutes and His judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou will not hear, but thou but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Listen to what he said. I denounce you. This day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou pass over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Amos said that we are to follow the Lord, that we may live. And Moses said that we are to choose life, that we and our seed may live. There's something to following the Lord Jesus Christ today. If we'll make the right choices, uh, if we'll follow Him without, amen, doubting or wondering why the Lord is doing this, but have that trust in the Lord to know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to His will, His power that worketh in us. I'm telling you today, friend, amen, that if we'll follow the Lord, simply we'll not get lost. Amen? We won't be that wanderer. We won't be that one groping in the midst of the darkness, trying to find our way. We'll find today, amen, that we'll walk in the sunshine. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We were out here last night and we got here after dark and Riley told me, Riley said, I'm scared. I got here, it was a little after nine when I got here and Riley said, I'm scared. I said, what you scared of? He said, bears. He said, mean people. He said, all kinds of things. And uh, I said, well, stay in the truck. And I went around and I cut on all the outside lights that I could cut on here at the church. And I began to work and began to do my thing. Riley must have got over his fear. Because he started, I had the truck loaded with bicycles and foot scooters and all kinds of stuff that Riley wanted to bring that he took to Bladenburg with him and so he got his scooter out and he started to ride and here he was he was riding and having a good time but you know what made the difference for Riley 
Riley was scared when it was dark. I had lights on the lawnmower, but I didn't have one on that weed eater. I reckon I need to strap a flashlight to it. And uh, he was scared while it was dark. That one light light was burning over there, and this one's burnt out, and that one was burning. And so there was a little bit of light over here, and there was a little bit of light over there, but they want a whole lot right here. But when I got all them lights on, the porch lights, and it lit up this, and I cut on them floodlights back there, and he could see around him where nothing couldn't sneak up on him. That fear left him. And he didn't say another word about being scared. I knew he really wasn't scared when I asked him when I had Amy come out here and bring me something. I said, are you staying with me or are you going back with your mama? He said, I'm staying with you. I knew he really wasn't scared then. What made the difference for Riley? It changed from darkness to light. Woo! Huh? The devil will try to keep you in darkness, friend. The devil will try to keep you wondering about what's lurking in the shadows where you can't see and you can't hardly make it out. Y'all know I, I got this, I'm just scared to death of snakes. It ain't that I'm, I'm scared to death of a snake. And we were there, Amy and myself was in the yard and we was cutting them bushes late Friday night and it was dark. It was right at dark. I mean, Well, it was dark, wasn't it? It was dark. And I was in there and I was cutting them and then I started raking. And I was in and amongst all them bushes and they was thick and all that stuff. And you don't never think about bright snakes being in there. You don't think about that stuff. You think of ways to try to keep it out of your mind. And I was in there and I had that rake in there between them bushes and I pulled some of them leaves and I seen something shimmy down there and I jumped before I know it. I was hopping in there and I, looked, I said, oh, that's just one of them stalks. And I kept on raking, huh? Oh, we get in places where we can't see good and we can't distinguish things good and clear and resolute. And we'll, get, we'll be kind of scared. We'll be kind of on edge just a little bit. We'll have a feeling of uncertainty about us. So we don't understand what's going to jump out next. But can I tell you, when you cut the light on, it'll take all the shadows away. I'm telling you, that's what Jesus did for you and I. He delivered us from darkness into His marvelous light. He took the power of darkness away. Amen. And replaced it with the marvelous power of His life. Amen. I don't have to be scared of the dark because I'm not walking in the dark. I'm walking in the light of God's love. I'm following Him. And in Him is peace and love and joy and fullness of the Spirit of God. Amen. He wants us to follow Him. Amen. That we can walk in the light. You don't have to be scared following the Lord Jesus Christ. But you can have all assurance. Amen. That everything will be fine in trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has told us where not to go. And the Lord has told us where to go. It's our choice in what we're going to do. Are we going to follow Him? Or are we going to go in a different direction? You can have as much of God as you want. You can have all of the Lord that you desire if we will but follow Him. If we'll quit playing ping pong with the devil and start playing smack Him on the head. Amen. With the Word of God. Amen. We'll find. Amen. That that power of God will rise up in our lives, amen, and we'll be able to live a good and holy life in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand together.